Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to use custom Sapir code blocks. They're really practical because you can just run more complex functions or also requests like uh, post request or get request in one simple block. And you can also then instantly work with the data so you don't have to have like a giant flow. And also you can kind of replace Sapir webhooks so you don't need to have the premium function to do basic API requests. Um, in this example, we're going to build this thing, which is basically our own personalized email newsletter where we started every single day. Then we run the code block where we get a Bitcoin API, which tells us the price of Bitcoin and the price of Ethereum. And also we're going to fetch the weather for the city that we set them. And we then send that per us, ourselves per email. And I'm just going to show you how the whole thing works, how code works in Sapir and how we can do it. For that, we're just going to go here, start a new step, and our first event will be a schedule. We choose scheduling, we say for every day. Then we choose at, say, that's 8 a.m. This just means that every day at 8, the set will run and go through the whole thing. Then we test the trigger. And next thing is going to be that we select code. So we go by code by Sapir, which is not a premium function so instead of like webhooks where you would need a premium account you can run a code by sapir completely free so we go on code by sapir and then we can either choose javascript or python and for this example we use python but the thing is if you know python you know that you can use quite a lot of packages and libraries in python but not in sapir you're very limited for the amounts of libraries that you have so it's not that you can build a whole application inside of sapir with python you have to kind of be restricted to the request package, which is also the main thing you would need or like usual, like average Python functions, but nothing big. Then we run it. And now I'm going to explain this. So we have input data, which we could call, for example, our, and then in anything we beforehand, we can then insert it. So for example, like uh, we call it so called date and then we have the date of it. Or for example, imagine we have a form where someone submits something, or we have a name on email, and then we can put that data into our Python code. And we would get it by calling input data and then we call the dictionary of that where we name the key of what we have. So it would be date. And this would then call the date. And then we can set this to date and use it in the function. For example, we could, I don't know, print a date or do anything with that. And if you want to get that, what we create in the function out, we have to create an output. So we just put the output function and then we set date and then when we do anything we would get date out and now i'm going to show you the code and explain how it works so we go into the code and the first thing we do is we're going to import the requests request is basically so we can do post or get requests to any api for example a webhook that we already discussed would for example be a post request that we sent so we give an url and the data payload and then we take the fix form and the idea of the code we build now is we first have to do a post request or get request to a API that gets us daily information about cryptocurrencies. We use the uh, CoinGecko. They offer uh, lots of information about different kinds of uh, cryptocurrencies and also the weather API where we then get information about the weather of a certain location. So the first thing will be we create a function where we then call upon the cryptocurrency API. So. For this, we have an API endpoint, which is given in documentation. So the API the CoinGecko, we justify it and then we put it in and then we take the request data. So we define a new variable called data in which we have a request and then we get the API endpoint URL and the JSON format. So the data that gives us. And then in this JSON file, we define Bitcoin price and Ethereum price. By this, we look through the data for Bitcoin and also then for USD and the same thing we do with Ethereum and then return those two variables. Next thing is going to be fetching the weather API. Same thing, but this time we also have 
a variable of latitude, longitude, and API key. And we put those inside our function up here. So latitude is, and longitude is just the geographical data, and the API key is retained from us from the function itself, so from the service. And then we create a temperature, and in the data we return, we find the main. So this part, which is just called main, and inside of main, we then look for temperature. This is how dictionaries work in Python. And the next thing is we have to basically call the function and set our variables. So we set Bitcoin price and Ethereum price and call the function that sets those two things. And then we set it. Then the next thing is we set up the latitude and longitude and API key for the weather API. And then we call temperature by setting the function of weather, putting in the latitude, longitude and API key. And then we create our newsletter. For this, we use an F string, but not just a normal S string, but a formatted S string. So the way we write this will then create basically the output in the exact format that we write it down. So we write our newsletter, so personal daily newsletter. We give our Bitcoin to the Bitcoin price we set up here before. The Ethereum price the same way, and also the temperature in the same way. And then we put an output which is just the newsletter content as newsletter content. And this will then be used outside of this Python code inside of Sapier. Then we go continue. Then we test it. This will run. And we see we have the current Bitcoin price, we have the current Ethereum price, and we have the temperature. It's 30.4 uh, degrees. So we have a little issue with the pointing here, but we can fix that later. Now we publish that. And then we add the Gmail function. We just go for Gmail. We choose an event. We send an email. We choose my account. We send it to myself. And in here, we set the variable of Python code and we find the new set of content that we create. So everything we exported, as we saw in the code, can now then be put in here. And then we continue. This will be the body of what we sent. And then we test the step. And we see it was sent and we can look into the inbox. And we see our email is received. And the way this is structured, it will be sent to us every single day when the SAP runs. And you can use that in as many ways as you want to, but this was just a little way to show you how we can use the code. And basically anything you can do in Python that doesn't require an extra library can be done inside of Sapien. And I hope you find this helpful and see you in the next one.